to Ray 501. I'm in Fukushima Diary. This article is dated September 7th, 2011, and TEPCO watching us in stealth mode. This is regarding Mochizuki Iori's first blog site that he had that got shut down. And the reason is, is because TEPCO, you can see this little picture here, TEPCO owns the internet service owns the internet service so they own all communications there's a thriving industry that gets paid very very well to surveil the web for content that might or not be of concern to various corporate interests mm-hmm some of those companies do it openly some companies prefer to do the surveillance cryptically, and what we will show you today is just such action by a company called Dream Train Inc. that has been owned in the past by TEPCO and is currently owned by Mitsubishi. They don't make just cars. They make nuclear reactors in their heavy industries division, and needless to say, the Japanese politicians are deeply invested in helping Mitsubishi and other companies export nuclear power plants as a growth strategy for Japan. Sad, and part of the whole death cult disaster capitalism that is going on right now. Okay, so Dream Train is the uh, internet service. So you see how they're all connected. And this is the path that led them to start to figure out who was watching them. Dream Train Internet Inc. Mitsubishi owns it now, according to them. Who owns it? Mitsubishi or Freebit? Then there was another company called Freebit. Um, and they just keep trading off or buying each other's stocks. So I wanted to find out a little bit more about TEPCO. There's some history here. In 2002, TEPCO's president, vice president, and chairman quit over a nuclear safety scandal as the company admitted that it might have failed to accurately report cracks at nuclear reactors in the 80s and the 90s. The company had to shut every boiling water nuclear reactor until more inspections could occur. TEPCO eventually admitted to 200 occasions in which information had been falsified between 1977 and 2002. Hmm. Those revelations have led to some skepticism that the company is being forthcoming about the current crisis? Huh. Don't think so. And it talks a little bit more about the profits and everything else, but We know they're making a grip of money. So then, in my searches, I tried to look up TEPCO, and this TEPCO came up, and it says TEPCO LLC is in no way affiliated with the Tokyo Electric Power Company, located in Japan. So this one is in Texas. But now, remember, Mitsubishi owns TEPCO. So I'm not understanding if you're in North America why you wouldn't change your name. It, it just doesn't make any sense that it's not related in some way. However, since it's a LLC, what I did find is that one of the things that they are all about is uh, refining facilities. These are all refineries. Okay. Let's see, it says at the bottom. Crude oil 
99.42. It just doesn't make any sense that TEPCO, um, this TEPCO wouldn't be affiliated with the one in Japan in some way, shape, or form. I still haven't figured that part out, but I just thought I'd throw that up there. So let's move on to Mitsubishi. Now, May 31st, no more than what, two weeks after Fukushima, they decided they would establish a new engineering center in Charlotte, North Carolina to expand the company's business in the U.S. market of building new nuclear power plants and supplying replacement components for existing nuclear power plants. Hmm. Establishing our engineering center in North Carolina is a further expansion of our U.S. operations to meet the growing needs of our U.S. utility customers for safe and efficient nuclear power plant technology. Boy, I thought I didn't feel safe before. You know, take your, take your nuclear energy systems back to Japan and get that straightened out first. Lordy, help us. This is just, this is just frightening. Frightening. Okay. So here are Mitsubishi's U.S. customers of the uh, plants that they are supplying parts to. These are just some of them. San Onofre, Diablo Canyon, South Texas Project, Farley, Alabama, H.B. Robinson, South Carolina, Surrey and North Anna, Virginia, Milestone, uh, Palisades, Kiwani, Point Beach, Prairie Island, Fort Calhoun, Diablo Canyon, San Onofre. So what kind of caught my eye was Fort Calhoun. And see what they've had, let's see what they've supplied them. Replacement steam generator, replacement reactor vessel, closure head, and a replacement pressurizer. Okay, Mitsubishi, like I just said, go back to Japan. Because obviously, we've had an awful lot of problems. We just had a problem at San Onofre. I haven't heard much about Fort Calhoun lately. And didn't wasn't there a problem with Prairie Island? I there's been so many problems. I I don't know. You know, just. I kind of was going through some of these. Just interesting to me. Um, how all of these companies are are intermixed. Tepco and Mitsubishi. And here we have... Mitsubishi Corporation signs agreement for natural gas joint venture with Iraq, Iraq and Shell. This is dated November 28th. And there were a whole bunch of really recent uh, ventures that I read on here. There was like five or six, all within November. So they are ramping up quickly. They are in uh, Australia, heavy in Australia. But this one caught my eye because of what's going on in the Middle East. The Iraqi Ministry of Oil formally signed a joint venture agreement with Shell, the South Gas Company, an affiliate of MOO and Mitsubishi Corporation on an initiative to capture associated gas in South Iraq. MC made an agreement with Shell to take a 5% interest in the project in 2009. Following the Iraq government approval made on November 15th this year, 
SGC, Shell, and MC have signed agreements associated with the project. These agreements create the Basra Gas Company joint venture made up of Iraq's SGC, 44%, Shell, 51%, and MC, 5%. Some 700 million standard cubic feet per day of natural gas, 5 million tons per year, which is produced by upstream suppliers in association with oil, is currently flared every day in southern Iraq because of a lack of infrastructure to collect it. It will collect raw gas from Rumalia, Zubar, and West Kurna, one fields in southern Iraq, process that gas into valuable products such as natural gas, condensate and liquefied petroleum gas, initially for sale domestically in Iraq. I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. They must have offered him an awful lot of money. Just don't get it. All these companies, they're all, they're all hooked up so politically that it's hard to see and understand. You know, one minute on one hand, they're, you know, trying to steal everything from them. I mean, if Shell's in on this, Shell's part of the United States, so why is NATO in there trying to, to, to take over all these countries and steal all this from them? Or maybe they're, maybe the U.S. is pissed off because Mitsubishi's in there? Mitsubishi's only in there for 5%. Shell's got 50, 51%. I don't know. <clears throat> I just am amazed at how how far Mitsubishi Corporation has something like over 600 different uh, entities worldwide, and in, they are in 80 different countries on every level, on every level imaginable, from outer space. Uh, the one that really blew my mind was um, windmills, you know, wind energy. And yet they're in the United States pushing more nuclear power plants. <sighs> Sad, sick. So, I just thought I'd put that out there. Just I could I could probably sit here for another hour and pull up that much more information. It's just kind of just kind of interesting. It kind of reminds me of uh, uh, how everybody's hooked up in the United States. You know, the politicians and the companies and all that. Alrighty, as always, God bless.